Good morning and welcome to worship here at Braddock Street Church where we are followers of Jesus, loving God in worship, loving others in small groups, and serving the world in mission. My name is Annalise and I'm one of the pastors here at Braddock Street and I'm so glad that you are joining us in worship today. If you are new to us, in the Facebook comments, you will find a digital contact card. If you would take a moment to fill that out, it would help us to get to know you better. And regardless of whether or not you are new, everyone can like and comment and share. Let us know that you are with us, and I will be with you through the comments in the comments today. And so if you have prayer requests, please leave them there, and we will pray over those together towards the end of our service. Now, would you please join together with me in our call to worship? I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together. To it, the tribes go up. The tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. And now let us join together in our opening prayer. God of Israel, God of the church, you have always called your people to practice faith in community, and you would not abandon us to run the race of faith alone. We give you thanks for those that walk alongside us on our journey, fellow disciples who hold one another up as we struggle to know your way and be faithful. By the power of your spirit, empower us to love one another as you have loved us, that the world around us might see a reflection of your love in us, In the name of the lover of our souls, Jesus Christ, amen. Now let us join together in our opening hymn, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee.
Good morning. My name is Kirk Nave. I'm one of the pastors here at Braddock Street United Methodist Church. Our scripture today comes to us from the gospel according to John, the 13th chapter beginning with the 31st verse. Hear now the good news of Jesus Christ. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Dominsky and uh, they, Marisol is the sister of Margie Hernandez, so they already have a connection with our church, and uh, they moved up here from Hope Sound, First United Methodist Church, Hope Sound, Florida, and they're anxious to join our church. In fact, we've already done the paperwork and so forth here in the pandemic, but I wanted to get, get give you a chance to meet them and uh, as they take their vows of membership for the church. So Charlie and Marisol, I just have one question for you. As members of this congregation, Braddock Street United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, will you say, I will? I will. I will. Very good. And then there's a promise that we as a congregation make to you. Uh, mem members of the household of God, this is you, Braddock Street Church. I commend Charlie and Mary's soul to your love and care. Do all in your power to confirm their faith Confirm their hope, increase their faith, and perfect them in love. And will you join with me, Braddock Street? We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And here in worship, we're gonna, we're gonna pray for Charlie and Mary's soul. Let us pray. Holy God, we are honored that Charlie and Mary's souls have experienced your Holy Spirit in our congregation way back before there was a pandemic and continually through this difficult time. And we rejoice that they wanna be a part of our church family. We ask your blessing, your guidance, your protection upon them. We look forward to hearing their witness of your work in their lives, and may we witness faithfully to them, supporting one another as we join hands on this journey of following Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Charlie and Mary Soul. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Kirk. My apologies if you weren't able to hear me earlier. That was my bad, and the batteries that I did not change properly in my microphone. So, my apologies. Now we're going to worship God uh, through our offering. And we like to always let you know the ways in which your giving to our church is used in ministry. One of those ways is in support of Lisa Nichols. She is a missionary to Appalachia. Um, not too long ago, she was the executive director of the Henry Fork Center in Franklin County, Virginia. She now serves as the executive director at the Jubilee Project in Sneedville, Tennessee. Ministry particularly with young people uh, dealing with food insecurity as well as education and spiritual health. Just another place that your giving is used to share the love of Jesus Christ. Let us worship God through our giving.
called the sheep without a shepherd to leave their distress. For your streams of forgiveness and the shade of your rest. And with compassion for the hurting, you reached out your hand as the lame ran to meet you and the dead breathed again. You saw behind the eyes of sorrow and shared in our tears, heard the song children draw near. What boundless love, what fathomless grace you have shown us, O God of compassion. Each day Thank you so much, Griffin. Today in worship, we continue our series entitled Contagious Community as we, Braddock Street Church, seek to be a community of faith that is contagious with Jesus Christ's love. The first week, we talked about our need as a community to include all. The next week, we talked about the initiation of being a, becoming a part of a community. And today, we'll talk about the characteristic of belonging. Let us pray together. Today, God, we, we seek to hear your voice. We long to feel the movement of your Holy Spirit in what is now a virtual community. Be with us in our homes. Be with us in this room as we seek to hear your word and feel the movement of your loving spirit in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Here's an image some of you may remember. Some of you aren't old enough. It was a television show called Cheers. The opening theme said, sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name, and they're always glad you came. You want to be where you can see our troubles are all the same. You want to go where everybody knows your name. I know I'm dating myself with that reference, but uh, young people, if you've never seen it and you want to binge on some old sitcom, it was one of my favorites and very popular among everyone at the time. It hit a note, that theme song. To be in a place where everybody knows your name, it, not so much the place, but being among a group of people that know you accept you for who you are with all of your with all of your quirks and the characters on that show had a great many quirks and it was fun it names that hunger that we have in the human soul to connect with other people to have that sense of belonging to be in a space where everybody knows your name and now i would argue in our society we have to be more intentional just watching a show like Cheers became a connected human experience for many people. Because back then, there weren't as many choices to, to find your entertainment, for example. I remember being a young person and 
trying to remember what they said to Norm and what Norm said back, you know, that night. And I would share it with my friends the next day. Did you, did you watch Cheers last night? Remember when Norm came in? And there was this ritual in the show. Whenever Norm entered the room, everybody said, Norm! And Sam Malone, the bartender, said, How's the world treating you, Norm? Norm responded, the world's, it's a dog-eat-dog world, Sammy, and I'm a milk-bone sandwich. You know, he had something humorous to say every single episode. And the next day, because there were only so many choices, so many networks to watch, chances are somebody was watching Cheers, and you shared that human experience. Now, we have so many choices. We get to choose our entertainment. We get to choose our news sources. We get to choose our music and select from just such a myriad of things. Hundreds of television channels by satellite, by cable, then by live stream. I'm not saying technology is a bad thing. I'm just saying back when we had fewer choices, there was more opportunity for a shared human experience. And you understand that also in a, in a smaller community. But now in this pandemic, if you're like I am, you feel that, that need for human connection and human relationship, shared experiences all the more, don't you? In the scripture this morning, Jesus says that we're to love one another, to love our neighbor. It's more of a challenge today, isn't it? Because it's hard to have that human contact. Technology allows us so much. Last night, I was a part of a baby shower. And people were there from Virginia, North Carolina, Utah, Colorado, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, all in one virtual space. And yet afterwards, my wife and I reflected, it's still not the same as having human contact where you can hug, you know, where everybody can speak at the same time in a room. You kind of have to be more polite in a virtual meeting. Jesus says, love your neighbor. And it's harder in this context the context of Jesus' words are these are some of Jesus' parting words. It's the night before his crucifixion. It is after the Lord's Supper. It's in John's Gospel right after that time when Jesus shows how to love one another in a very tangible way as he washes their feet and then says you should watch one another's feet. The scripture he gives today in John 13 verse 34 is summarized here. I give you a new commandment. That you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. A new commandment from the very mouth of Jesus. Do we give that a higher priority perhaps than even the ten? I don't know. But it's one of Jesus' parting words to his disciples. As we move forward, as you move forward, remember he said little children in a little while I won't be with you. As we move forward together, as disciples of Jesus Christ, this is the central commandment, that you love one another even as I have loved you. And remember, he just washed their feet. There's something very humbling about that activity. If you read that text about the, the washing of the feet, you, remember, you may remember Peter's reaction. Lord, I'm not going to allow you to wash my feet. There's something powerful in taking care of one another's needs in a physical way, particularly doing those things that aren't so clean, like washing feet. Some of us have experienced that in taking care of one another. Perhaps when somebody was sick, perhaps near the end of their life, and you did physical things that we won't mention here, right, that they didn't want you to have to do. It's very humbling. But it's such a powerful, intimate expression of love and care. Love one another even as I have loved you. In those very vulnerable moments, taking care of one another. This is what we hunger for, isn't it? That physical connection where love is expressed in a very physical way. If you're like me right now, because of the pandemic and because of the events of January the 6th, I feel the need for community that need for belonging more than ever because there's just, there's just so much to process. Watching January 6th, I brought back feelings of September the 11th. It was like I found myself transfixed to the television 
What is going on? What's happening? It doesn't make sense. People waving American flags while at the same time attacking America's most hallowed halls. And that one scene that I've seen, seen since then where there was a man with one of those Blue Lives Matter flags beating a police officer, what, it literally doesn't make sense. And now we move forward for an inauguration and even state capitals may be threatened. And it's a lot to process. And we need that space where we, we kind of have that experience. Did you see what I see? What did you make of this? And that trusted space where we may misspeak because we misunderstand. But these are people who have been with us and, and understand who we are there's just so much to process, and we hunger for that. You know, it was once the very heart of Methodism. And I say Methodism with apologies to those who come from the Evangelical United Brethren Church, and we're now United Methodists, I know. But when Methodism was founded, it was based not on worshiping congregations, but societies that sometimes had a preacher there. But those societies were subdivided into classes and bands, those small groups for sharing and accountability and support on this Christian journey that leaves us with a lot to process from time to time. Somewhere over time, we, we changed our understanding of what is the essence of Christianity, what's the essence of participation. Sometimes you hear people say, well, I'm a Catholic or Baptist or Methodist or fill in the blank, you know, but I don't go as though attending worship is the benchmark of Christian activity. Or we'll say, so-and-so goes every single Sunday. Therefore, we know that they were Christian and they're doing everything that's essential to Christian experience and spiritual growth. That's really relatively a new thing. One of the things that I do uh, when I am appointed to serve a congregation is I'll go back in their history. We have this thing in United Methodism called the Conference Journal and it has kind of the, the statistical history of a congregation. You can pick up certain, certain things that go on. And I like to go deep. And I remember the first time I, I tried to go 100 years into a church's history and I had discovered something. That 100 years ago, the Methodists didn't even count how many people were in worship on a Sunday morning. But you know what they did count? Very diligently, the attendance in their small groups, particularly their Sunday school classes. This was seen as the most essential piece of Christian experience at the time. Whether or not we come together for, for Bible study and that time where we can support and fellowship, we have that, that space where everybody knows your name. That's the most essential piece. That was once the heart of Methodism. And I want to lift that up again because it's going to help us move forward if we reclaim that. What do I hear from young adults today? I hear their hunger for two primary things over and over again. There's a, a, a sense of a longing for community, a sense of belonging, right? And also to be a part of a, a, of a faith that makes a difference in the world. They want to believe in something where they can make, help, help change the world in a better way. Those are the two things I hear from young adults, and I would argue these are the two things that United Methodists are best positioned for among all denominations, this, this heart of the small group and this heart of service to the community. This is something we do well, and I want us to appreciate that this morning, this space where everybody knows your name. It's why we include in our, in our vision statement right? We want to be followers of Jesus, which is kind of an easy way to say disciples, just like Matthew, Peter, Mary Magdalene, and the others. We want to be followers of Jesus, who express that following in three primary ways in our community of faith, the church. We love God in worship, like we're doing this morning. We love one another in, in small groups, because that is, there's that intimate space of love, support, and growth. And we serve the world in mission. You know, all of these things that help us to grow should compel us to make a difference. That's more important now than ever. And it's essentially important in, in a large church like Braddock Street. Because normally, pre-pandemic, you know, we had three different worshiping congregations who worshiped at different times. And 
Every now and then I'd see somebody who normally came to the 1115 service at the 10 o'clock service and vice versa. But generally, we're creatures of habit. It's kind of like each congregation has their own culture. And many people don't know other people in the congregation. Even if you're in the same room, you may not know one another by name. I experienced this as, as a young adult in a large church that, that I attended. Um, it's especially difficult for young adults in the spiritual journey. It's a very vulnerable time because so many things are changing. As you step maybe from high school into the real world or, or into college or for college into the real world of having your first job, which probably isn't going to work out, and then you go to another job and you may change locations, relationships change, people that you're dating or perhaps you go through marriage all these things are changing. So it's very, very hard to be engaged for an extended period of time with the same people. I noticed when I was a young adult worshiping as a lay person, if I didn't go I mean, that, to that large church on a given Sunday morning, nobody noticed, except maybe the people that I tended to sit with that I knew. If I missed for a number of weeks, nobody called to say, hey, we miss you. It's very difficult in a large church. Small churches, you know, the first church that I served had 35 people. If somebody missed, we all knew. And their uncle, who probably would have been there too, would have called at 1 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Where were you today? You know? and that's why in a large church like ourselves, those small groups are even more essential. That space where everybody knows your name. What's going to happen at the end of this pandemic in the life of our church? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. I'm hopeful that many people with this, you know, living without worship and pers- worshiping in person will have a greater hunger, a greater need to reconnect with everybody. I feel that. I know. At the same time, I'm wondering if there are people who are just getting used to not being engaged in the community because we can't be here face to face right now. Oh, I'm not worried if people are comfortable worshiping in pajamas with a cup of coffee. I'm fine with that, right? You want to continue that after the pandemic and continue to worship online? That's great. But my fear is that some people will not reconnect at all. It's essential to our growth. Our small groups mean so much. And my hope this morning is that you'll re-experience that hunger for connecting with one another as a community, that sense of belonging and what that means to our spiritual journey. And I could tell you stories. I could tell you stories of marriages that were saved by a church small group. I can even tell you one story of a woman whose life was saved because of that community that continued to support her. But when I think about what a small group and a church mean to an individual, I remember a backdoor neighbor that attended a church, and I said, tell me, why is your Sunday school class, in his case, why are you guys, why are you so tight? Why why does it mean so much to you, this group of yours? He said, well, let me tell you, Kirk. He said, you know, so-and-so, he lost his wife a couple of years ago. Who was there to support him? You know, so-and-so in that class? She lost a child years ago, and this is what they called it back then, sudden infant death syndrome. Nobody could explain why her child died. Who was there for her? Who supported her? And when I had melanoma and had to go through chemotherapy that whole time, who was there for me? My group. My class means everything to me. I don't know where I'd be without them. And so today, I want to just do something just a little bit different. I want to encourage you to name your appreciation for what this community of faith means to you. I want you to get into the comments section of Facebook Live. Um, If you're not a part of our congregation, you're worshiping alongside of us, maybe you can just watch these comments and appreciate what, what church and small groups mean to us, this sense of belonging So we're just going to put this question on the screen, and I'm going to stop talking, and I'm going to let you do the preaching for a little bit. What do you love about belonging to Braddock Street United Methodist Church? I'm going to step away and just write a sentence or two about what your church means to you.
Thank you so much for continuing to share the ways that you love belonging to this congregation. Um, you can keep them rolling through the comment section there, and we hope that this was a good way for you all to remember how connected we are, even though we cannot be in worship together quite yet. Um, we do pray that you will continue to find your home and your community here and in those small groups. And if you aren't connected to one, but you want to be, let me know. I will get you connected to a small group or I will help you start one or whatever it is that you need. We will make that happen um, because as Pastor Kirk said, that is such an important part of what we do here. And now, would you please pray with me? Holy God, who is community, your presence is with us always, and we know that your presence is with all of the folks that we would raise to you today by name and in our hearts. Today we raise to you Ed Orndorff, Betty Orndorff, Harold Ogg, Jim Athern, Robin and Riley Ames, Mary Ashton Athern's brother, Bill Vanskoy, Phil Newcomb, Anita and Wendell Dick's family, Wayne Dick, John Goodlow, Adrian O'Connor, Mike Ricketts, George Morris, Danny Hoops, Denny Bromley, Harold Madigan, Robbie Robinson, the family of Patrick Mazzacanieri, Anna Tochi Andre, Gary Boley, Jim, Kenny Mason, Anna Hieronymus, Ruby Cook, Danette Hayes, Darlene Poles, the Glass family, the Thompson family, Colleen Woods and family, Scott Hackett, the Stedman family, the Ruffin family, Pastor Jeff Roberts, Joe Graber, Miriam Balestros, Mark Somerville, Katie Teets, Kim, Mary Lou and Wanda, Bob and Maureen. Holy One, we also pray for reconciliation in families and among friendships. We pray for a peaceful inauguration and protection of our democracy. We pray for all of those who are victims of COVID-19 and their families, for all healthcare workers and essential services employees, all of those who are helping to keep our society running in the midst of this pandemic and who are helping to keep us safe. God, we pray for all of these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us join together in our closing hymn.
Thank you again for taking time out of your Sunday morning to worship with us this morning. It's been great to have a sense, as you shared in your comments, uh, a reappreciation of what this community of faith means to each of us. As we go, uh, I would lift up to you what we sent out on Tuesday through the Constant Contact email that uh, we're still reaching out through the Backpack Ministry currently to 72 children at Redbud Run Elementary School. Um, the Backpack Ministry, of course, provides food to children um, who have been depending upon school food, and we run it throughout the year even without a pandemic because when they go home on the weekend, sometimes they are food insecure. Uh, they lifted up several needs. They seem to run out of canned vegetables, macaroni and cheese, and beefaroni. So please keep that ministry in your prayers and let us continue to feed young people around us. But now go. Go to love one another even as Jesus Christ has loved you. Go with the blessing of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.